So may I now request Sheikhul Islam, Dr. Muhammad Tahirul Qadri Saab to address this roundtable conference. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All respectable leaders representing different faiths, religious and social communities and honorable participants of this People's Saad Roundtable Conference. After endorsing whatever my respectable brother Ulkarni Sahib has said in connection of the main theme of convening the People's Saar Conference. I would like to start with the holy words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which he used to recite every day after every prayer. And he used to recite, O oh Lord, you are peace, and peace comes from you, and peace returns to you, and enable us, O oh our Lord, to live a life full of peace, and enable us to enter in the hereafter the abode of peace. This is the supplication known as prayer of peace. This was a continuous and consistent practice of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, throughout his life. And the same has been adopted by the Muslim community individually and collectively all over the world. Our world presently has become a global village where the people are more interconnected than ever. No nation or ethnicity in the present time can claim complete isolation in an atmosphere of increased interaction and very quick access to global means of communication. Human beings have become more responsible and they need more than ever to show their maturity, maturity of mind, their thoughts, and they need to work with two basic principles. And these principles are the peaceful coexistence and mutual cooperation. In order to work on the basis of peaceful coexistence and mutual cooperation, we need five basic Islamic values on which the Quran and the Sunnah of Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, have developed and established the human society. These are the five fundamental Islamic values for human society prescribed by Islam. One is recognition of human dignity. 
Second is understanding of the common origin of all human beings, irrespective of their race, color, faith, and creed. Three, consideration of diversity, plurality of human communities, human faiths, human creeds as positive and to and try to see the unity the beauty of unity within this diversity of the world for acknowledgement and showing respect to all religions And number five, Islam has emphasized on every single follower of Quran and every single follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that all Muslim community, they should deal justly and equitably in their interaction with the peoples of all other religions. accepting the basic concept of freedom of religion, freedom of thought. So this concept of mutual peaceful coexistence and mutual coordination, this leads us to collaborative action. And this finally leads us to collective solidarity of human society. We have to realize that every single creature of this world living on this planet of Earth has to be the part of collaborative action and has to be the part of this collective coordination and solidarity in the same way as Almighty God has created every system supportive to the other system. For example, rain helps grass to grow. Then grass helps animals to grow. Then animals help human beings to grow. In the same way, Human beings should help the societies to grow. And this human beings help to societies to grow is only possible if they realize their individual and collective responsibility in helping one another at individual level, at collective level, at societal level and at global level, helping each other and one another on the basis of promoting of good and rejecting the evil. However, the current trend of this world, the developing global tensions and world wars, they tell us that unfortunately, Our future doesn't look peace-oriented. There are indications that we are heading towards worse destruction than our world has ever seen. In these particular circumstances, it has become a primary and foremost responsibility of the religious leaders spiritual leaders, religious and social societies and spiritual representatives and leaders that they should make every possible effort for the dominion and domination of peace and tranquility of the planet of Earth. This is the global perspective, but at the same time, The part of the world which we are living in, I mean the South Asia, 
this is much more significant and much more relevant in this whole global perspective in order to build the atmosphere of peaceful coexistence and global solidarity of human beings. The reason, although there are territorial limitations, there are geographical boundaries that define the nations and the state, but still South Asia has a rich and diverse spiritual heritage that the people of all Sark countries share. Even the diversity of the Islamic community is common to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan and other Sark countries. Here I would like to quote Mahatma Gandhi. He said <clears throat> while addressing the closing session of the Inter-Asian Relations Conference held on 2nd of April 1947 in New Delhi. Mahatma Gandhi said that wisdom came to the West from the East. And he asked the audience, who were the carriers of this wisdom? He was pointing at all great carriers of truth and wisdom of the world. And he said all of them Basically, they were from Asia. Zoroaster, he belonged to the East, to Asia. Buddha belonged to the East, Asia and India. Even Moses, although he was born in Egypt, but he settled in Palestine, so he also belonged to Asia. Then Jesus he belonged to Asia. Then came Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He belonged to Asia. Mahatma Gandhi said, I don't know a single person to match these men of Asia. And he said, after reminding the delegates about Asia's great and unique prophetic heritage, Gandhi urged them to remain faithful to this heritage by saying that if you want to give a message again to the world, it must be a message of love. And this is message of today's People's Sark Roundtable Conference. It must be a message of truth, Satyagara. It must be a message of peace. It must be a message of tolerance. It must be a message of global human brotherhood. It must be a message of tranquility. It must, must be a message of mutual respect. It must be a message of piety and piousness. Piousness. It must be a message of freedom. This is the main theme which has invited us today. And I would add to the words of Mahatma Gandhi with due respect that according to Islamic teachings, the first prophet of Islam mentioned in the Holy Quran as well as in the Holy Bible, Adam salam, when he was sent down on the earth from heavens, he was settled in India. Hind, the old name Hind. So he also in a way belonged to Asia. And Abraham, Prophet Abraham, whose name was mentioned by brother, respectable Kulkarni Sahib, he also belonged to Babel, the Iraq. So this is a great heritage, a great heritage. But we share the common principles, common teachings, common values, a very considerable part of our cultures our beliefs, our faiths, our moral values, our teachings, our practices, we share with each other, with one another. As I mentioned, 
the Holy Prophet's supplication in the same way all these teachings are available everywhere in Quran and Sunnah. Every single person knows that world Islam, its root world and origin is peace and security. Islam means to come in peace and to provide peace to every single soul of mankind. And Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, it is stated in Quran, that whoever killed a person unjustly, except as a punishment for murder, or for spreading disorder in the land, it would be as if he killed all the people of human society. And whoever saved him from unjust murder and made him survive, it would be as if he saved the lives of all people of the human community. Islam dignifies human being, human life, human honor, human wealth, human property, human freedom, human rights. So much so that in order to establishing a peaceful interaction with all people belonging to other religions, Prophet of Islam says that any Muslim, if any Muslim kills a non-Muslim, he will not smell the fragrance of paradise in spite of being a Muslim and my follower, even though the fragrance of paradise can be smelled at a distance of 40 years, Prophet of Islam said that any Muslim who unjustly kills a non-Muslim, God will make paradise forbidden for him. And Prophet of Islam said that That person who provides easiness, who helps, who assists the mankind, irrespective of their creed and their faith, Almighty Allah will keep him under the shade of his throne on the day of judgment, when there will be no shade that they accept his shade of mercy. The basic teachings of Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, they are based on the concept of freedom of religion and respect for every religion. A time has arrived now to develop this respect, to develop respect for the human race, to develop respect for human societies, to develop peace and integration between different communities. Because Islam and the same is the case of every religion. Believes in mercy, believes in peace, believes in love, believes in self-negation and promotion of peace and love and tolerance. Same are the teachings of every religion of the world. I am quoting here Holy Veda. And I am quoting from Yajur Veda, where it is stated, O Supreme Lord, in the same way as I quoted the words of suppl prophetic supplications of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which he used to recite every day. Now I am quoting from Yajur Veda. Just we have to think upon which is the basic origin where this light is coming commonly everywhere. It is in the Yajur Veda, chapter 36, verse 18. O Supreme Lord, make me firm and resolute like thee. Bless that all may look on me with a friendly eye, and I look on others likewise. May we experience completely harmony and peace among us. And it is taught that attain highest glory and everlasting peace. In the same way, in Atharva Veda it is stated, harbor no enmity for anyone in your heart. Then you need fear no one, 
May you live the rest of your life in sublime peace. Atharva Veda, chapter 19, verse 14. Same are the teachings mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, where it is stated in chapter 2, verse 70 and 71. It is stated, the man who is driven by desires does not know such peace. The man who abandons all desires, who goes about free from craving, from whom there is no talk of mine or me, only he finds the peace. Dear brothers and respectable participants, all these words which I have read from Bhagavad Gita and Veda, if you read the Holy Quran, you will see, All these things that every person who wants to achieve the state of peace, You have to abandon your desires of your lower self in order to get eternal peace. Come closer to me and enter into the abode of peace. The same are the teachings. As I mentioned, that in Quran, Almighty Allah is known as Al-Haq, means truth. As-Salam means peace. Al-Hayyul Qayyum means immortal. These are the names given by Quran to Almighty God. And now, if we read, Upanisha, Upanishad, he is united with the Lord of love, who is truth, peace, and immortality. He is truth, and according to Quran, he is haq, and peace, he is salam, and immortality, he is al-hay al-qayyum, the source of joy, the supreme goal of life. <laughs> Same are the teachings we find in Buddha's teachings. Buddha talks of truth. In the same way as has been already mentioned about Mahatma Gandhi, his philosophy of truth, Satyagraha, his philosophy of non-violence, his philosophy of spinning wheel, the Charkha, the same Charkha has been mentioned by Bulle Shah, the great Islamic saint. A Charkha me katadi. Mera charkha no lakha kure. The significance of swimming wheel. The significance of the inner peace which Mahatma Gandhi and all other leaders, spiritual leaders of the world wanted to achieve from that. So Mahatma Buddha says about morality, this consists of truth, haq. And it means right speech. It means right action. It means right livelihood. It means right effort. It means right understanding. It means right resolve. So the whole concentration is on the concept of truth when he preaches the morality, sila. And the same has been emphasized by Holy Quran in the word, Kulil Hakkum Always, whenever you speak, it should be the truth. So learn truth, preach the truth, practice the truth promote the truth, establish the truth, and stand for truth, and fight for truth, and die for truth. These are the teachings of Quran, the philosophy of truth, then the philosophy of mercy, the philosophy of love. Now we come to the Bible. Same are the teachings which we find in Bible. In Bible, I'm quoting John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Then in Peter, chapter 3, it is stated again, do not repay evil for evil. Do not repay evil for evil. Or abuse for abuse. But on the contrary, repay with a blessing. This is Bible, I am quoting. And Quran says at the same time, 
وَيَدْرَعُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ حَسَّيَّةِ And the good people are those who repel evil by means of good. The pious people are those who do not repel evil through evil. No, they try to repel evil through goodness. Quran says, لا تستم الحسنة ولا سيئة And good and evil cannot be equal. And the Quranic commandment is إِذْفَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ أَسْسَيِّعَ Repel evil in such a way as is best of all. Surely good actions remove the evil actions. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُزْهِبْنَ السَّيِّعَاتِ You find the unity and uniformity of teachings and guidance and values spreaded all over the world. Almost in every religion which is being followed and practiced in this planet. Then Bible says this Peter. Those who desire life and desire to see good days. Let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. So peace is the common heritage. Peace is the common teaching. Peace has been equally emphasized everywhere. And the same is the practice, was the practice of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, entered on the, in Mecca while contesting, before that, he established this concept on which we are today convening the People's Sark Conference, when Holy Prophet migrated to Medina, at that time the majority of the population, they were Jews. He invited them and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, created a political alliance and wrote down a constitution for the city-state of Medina. And the second article of the constitution of Medina, known as As-Sahifa, tells, Innahum ummatun wahida. All the Muslims, the followers of Islam, and the other Jews and tribes and their allies, the non-Muslims, all citizens of this city-state, from today, they form a single ummah and single community. And in Article 28, Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote down, Inna Yahuda bani awf, ummatum ma'al mu'mineen. He said, that the, because at that time there was the main community was the Jews other than Muslims. He said the Jews of Bani Of jointly with the Muslims form one community, one nation. Except the Jews will have their own religion to practice. They would be free in their own religions and Muslim would be free in practicing their own religion. And in article 49 he said Inna yasri baharamun jawfuha. He said that the city of Yasrib, Medina, from today is a haram sanctuary of peace and security for the people of this treaty. So this, he declared the law of non-violence. There would be no violence on the land of our state. There would be no breach of trust. There would be no cruelty. There would be no uh, crime. There would be no killing. There would be no bloodshed. Finally, when he entered on the conquest of Makkah that day, when he entered, when all eight years since migration, every single dozens of wars, dozens of wars were imposed on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his community, by the pagans, Arabs of Mecca. In spite of all these difficulties and, pers and persuasions, Holy Prophet even entered into Mecca after the conquest. Not a single drop of human blood was shed on the land of Mecca. And he said, اِذْهَبُوا فَأَنْتُمُ الطُّلَقَى لَا تَسْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمِ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَهُوَ رَحْمُ الرَّحِمِينَ He said, go now, all of you are free, and there will be no revenge, no retaliation, and there will be no act of violence on the, on the land of Mecca. So every single enemy was forgiven. And then he prayed for them that Almighty God may forgive you, and he gave them a gift of mercy of God. And his biggest enemy at that time was Abu Sufyan. Biggest enemy. Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, declared, whoever enters Abu Sufyan's house is safe. Whoever lays down his weapon is safe. Whoever shuts his door is safe. So this was the day when Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, 
He, he peace be upon him, ceremonized the value of peace, the values of tolerance, the values of mercy, the values of forgiveness, the value of compassion, the value of kindness, the value of generosity, the value of benevolence and humanism. This day became rich in history, unforgettable for the mankind. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, told these. These, the same teachings continued throughout from generations to generation. And I find as this name of Swami Vivekananda has been mentioned by our brother, I would quote when Swami Vivekananda, he says, during his discourses, and he mentions ample and irrefutable positive references to Islam, and declares Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, respectfully as the messenger of equality. And he says, therefore, I am firmly persuaded that without this, he writes his letter to Almora on 10th of June, 1898. He said, I am firmly persuaded that without the help of practical Islam, theories of Vedantism, however fine and wonderful they may be, are entirely valueless to the vast mass of mankind. So he emphasized on the concept and he said that sectarianism, and I am quoting him specially, Swami Vivek Vivekananda, his, on 12th of January is his birthday. So celebrating his coming birthday, I am quoting when he says, sectarianism and bigotry are, and its horrible descendants and fanaticism, they have long possessed this beautiful earth. My dear brothers and sisters, now the time has come that we have to rid this earth, this planet, and we have to save this earth and planet, and particularly our part of the world, the South Asia, from sectarianism, from bigotry, from horrible situations, from bloodshedding, from killing, from extremism, from terrorism. Neither Islam nor any religion of this world allows any kind of act which leads towards extremism and terrorism. Whether any person is Muslim or non-Muslim, he is Hindu, he is Christian, he is a Jew, he may be a Jaini, he may be a Buddhist, he may be Sikh, he may belong to any religion. No person in any matter, in any case, is allowed to take life of any person, the one who is non-combatant, a peaceful civilian. So terrorism is totally condemned, not only Islam, but every religion in the whole world condemns acts of terrorism. At this time, I would request that this is a time I would, I would like to uh, uh, commemorate and ceremonize a, a just moment of silence in order to show the solidarity of those who became the victims of Bombay terrorism attack. Just a moment of silence in order to show the, the solidarity with those who became the victim of Bombay attack. We would stand for that, showing solidarity. Thank you very much, please. I have no hesitation in declaring that thousands of people, thousands of men and women, innocent people, ladies, women, old citizens, children, have been killed in the acts of terrorism in Pakistan. And the same is happening in this part. Irrespective of our land, whether this is taking place in in other side of the border or this side of the border we have to condemn every kind of terrorist activities from the from uh, every side from everywhere and we cannot protect any kind of terrorist and we cannot support any action of terrorism whether it is committed in the name of religion or it is committed in the name of any other aspect 
At the same time, I would like that to demand that religious minorities, whether they live in Pakistan or live in India, or they live in Bangladesh or live in other countries of SARC, they should feel safe and secure in all SARC countries. Because the SARC region is a region of multi-faith in character. Irrespective of how large or small a religious minority is, religious minorities should feel as safe and secure in their country as the majority community. And at the same time, all communities, religious leaders, spiritual leaders, political leaders, social leaders and activists, they should stand up against every kind of corruption and concentration of wealth in few hands and abuse of power. We need, if we want to promote our region, we have talents, we have natural resources. South Asia, this part of the world, can progress in the same way as West has progressed. But we need that abuse of power should be stopped. This stopping the abuse of power is the basic, one of the basic tenets of every religion. We have to fight against corruption. We have to fight against concentration and assimilation of wealth. And we have to fight for the social, political and economic democracy in our both countries. And finally, we need at this time that the relations between India and Pakistan should be normalized. We have to live like brothers, like friendly neighbor countries. And we have to close the chapter of hostility. Pakistan and India, Bangladesh, all SAR countries, particularly India, Pakistan, have to close the chapter of enmity. And we have, this is the time to open a new chapter of normal, good, neighborly, cooperative and friendly relations. As befits our shared religious and cultural and social values, neither should India be regarded as enemy, nor should Pakistan be regarded as enemy or adversary. Anti-India sentiments in Pakistan should come to an end, and anti-Pakistan sentiments in India should come to an end. We should change our mindset. Neither India is an enemy of Pakistan, nor Pakistan is an enemy of India. We have common enemy, and our common enemy is poverty. Our common enemy is disease. Our common enemy is illness. Our common enemy is corruption. Our power and any common enemy is ignorance and irritancy. Our common enemy is underdevelopment. These are issues to be addressed. If we settle our disputes amicably, with dialogue, without any recourse to military means, this is possible through negotiations. But negotiations can be successful if they take place in an atmosphere of trust, tranquility, and mutual accommodation. We should stand for the poor. We should fight against the poverty. Because the teachings of every religion, including Islam, are, I am ending my words by quoting an, incident, an event in the days of Holy Prophet وسلم, when Prophet Muhammad, he saw in his journey, some people had more mounts and some people were deprived totally from the mounts, from the camels, horses to ride. Some people had more resources and some people were deprived. Holy Prophet said, every person who has surplus mount, he should return the surplus mount to those, those who have don't, do, do, they don't possess for their basic need. Every person who has surplus provisions, he should return those provisions to those, those who are totally deprived of the basic necessities. And he went on mentioning different resources one by one. A time came when companion said, as if we don't have any right to possess any surplus commodity or any surplus provision in our life. The message of Holy Prophet was that we should try to establish a society which is based on equitable distribution of resources, which is based on social justice, which is based on development, which is based on human rights, which is based on our elimination and of poverty.
which is based on knowledge, science, technology, love, and all development. So now this is a time that our People's SAR conference should start a new relationship with the countries belonging to the SAR region so that we may create a new future. And I would endorse this uh, declaration, SAR declaration. I have also received its, its copy. It is here, some here. I endorse this SAR, People's SAR declaration to every single world. And myself, my organization, and my millions of my followers all over the world, every single person is outright. We will support this concept to develop here, and we will support every kind of struggle which would bring the peace and security to our region, and which will bring an end to hostilities between India and Pakistan. Thank you very much. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर साहब शुक्रिया थैंक यू एंड मे गॉड ब्लेस यू इन योर वेरी बोल्ड करेजस इनकलाब दैट यू आर ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग इन योर कंट्री दैट्स एन इनकलाब नॉट ओनली फॉर पाकिस्तान इट्स फॉर द एंटायर साक रीजन एंड इट विल डू एनॉमस गुड टू द एंटायर ह्यूमैनिटी थैंक यू वेरी what an honor it has been to hear you today and uh, we you assure you that we will work together because we are all brothers thank you brothers in you. religion brothers in society and we will create a new future as befits you. as you said our shared cultural spiritual heritage now may i request the honorable respected participants here to release two books of dr saab one is an indian edition of fatwa which i showed you earlier and the other is it's called jihad supreme jihad supreme jihad the supreme jihad jihad has been hijacked and we have to get it back from the terrorists <laughs> and, we, and, we, and we have to implement the philosophy of jihad in order to bring about the peace in the whole world this is the real jihad which brings the peace in the world this is the real jihad which fights against every act of terrorism which promotes humanity and which promotes love and tolerance and brotherhood between the human society thank you very much for inauguration of this book and and, and dr saab i want to thank you i want to take this occasion to say a big thank you for the honor that you have confer conferred upon me by asking thank me to do much. the introduction for these two books it's truly an honor for me dr saab as soon as i arrive as soon as i arrive i will feel uh, uh, honor to read whatever our brother kulkarni sahab has written in that thank you i hope i will get the visa soon yes <laughs> thank you दिल पे वो 
मोहब्बतों प्यार के संदेश हमन के खत लिए एक दूजे को पहुंचाने परिंदे उसके हम परवाज लंबी भरे हमन के खत लिए एक दूजे को पहुंचाने परिंदे उसके हम परवाज लंबी भरे करे सब मिलके सारे साथ में खुद ही को भूल कर हम कुछ गुफ्त गु करे जंगे छोड़ कर शुमाए हम जलाए बाकी जाधूप में उसके हम गीत गाए वो एक ही है जो हम परिंदे उसके हम परवाज लंबी भरे अमन के खत लिए एक दूजे को पहुंचाने परिंदे उसके हम 